World War I, 1914 to 1919, the 40 plus thousand British troops that died in one section of their artillery. So this symbolizes 46,000 killed in a war that was engineered by the elite on both sides. A war that wasn't against either government, a war that was really against the individual populations. That's what these wars have always been about. The Hundred Year War that the British had with the French, uh, that was about controlling populations. They've even found a lot of the historical letters where you will uh, have the different uh, kings and queens conferring between themselves, because they're all cousins, saying, oh, cousin, it's time for a war. I've got some rabble causing a problem. I'm going to deal with them immediately. Oh, yes, uh, we'll have to whip up a wall in for you there. <laughs> Last time I took some of your some of your areas, but I'll be, I'll be taking Brittany back this time. Well, very well. We've had it for 25 years. It's your turn now. Mm, well done, then. This is how it works. And then all of their all of their occultism there with the goddess. She's staring down on her sacrifice, 46,000 dead just from the artillery corps in World War I. And look, a royal fellowship. And over here, of death. A royal fellowship of death. And she stares down. And all over the Western world, you will see the goddess staring down on memorials that are literally built to her as sacrifices. And right here, Skull and Bones, Order of Death, Order of the Death Set, the Nazis, the Royal Fellowship of Death, and everywhere, the glorious dead, the glorious slaughter, the glorious bloodletting that the goddess demands. See, here's the Illuminati language, hidden in plain view, right in your face. Look at this statue of Achilles. Just more of the open mystery religion occultism of the city of London. Another war memorial, this time cast according to a Greek hero or Greek demigod. Well, this is a Commonwealth nation, still part of the United Kingdom, really. And we've got this World War I, World War II memorial. It's very beautiful, but it's also very occultic. And just as it is in London and all over the world where you have Commonwealth nations, you've got the goddess, actually two goddesses, with the torch up there and then the wreath of victory over the uh, victorious soldiers marching through a triumphant arch. Every facet of this is occultic. There is massive symbolism here. You have a star. You have the two twin pillars with obelisk points pointing downwards to the east. This, yeah, this entire thing is 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 just unbelievably occulting. Every facet of the layout. And again, most people who walk past this have no idea what they're even looking at. See, people call Texas the Lone Star State, and that's because of the huge Masonic underpinnings. And this is a memorial to fallen state and county and city police officers, and it's a star with one of their favorite symbols, the two obelisk or the two pillars with obelisk points on their tips in the eastern tip of the star, which itself then makes a pyramid. Come around here, I'll show you. This is a religious monument for the governmental caste that rules America. This is a monument to their enforcers. They're, they're fallen soldiers who have enforced domination on the people. See, from the cutoff point here, it's a black pyramid facing the east with this incredibly powerful Masonic symbol of the two obelisks or the two pillars. It's amazing. And they 
love to have their their religious icons be associated with memorials. They always have memorials at these religious sites, especially to female deities, to goddesses, just encircled with more, just encircled with war memorials and police memorials for the fallen. All over London, you will have huge temples and statues built openly to to goddesses and it will double as a monument to a queen and then in front of it will be a huge memorial to hundreds of thousands tens of thousands dead and it's the same everywhere and it is an offering to the deity because just just as the Aztecs had ritual sacrifice by the tens of thousands a year in many cases in the West we have our own way of ritual killing but it's done in war the Romans did it in war, but they also did it more stylized in the arena. The reason that we know this is a pentagram and not just a star, which is occultic enough and associated with magic in the Lone Star State, is because of how it's placed. The star is facing up because of the letters, honor, bravery, dedication, service, at the bottom. That's how the words are actuated, so that you're supposed to look at it from the east or the bottom of the pentagram, the most powerful point on the pentagram. And then, again, the most powerful point of the pentagram, pointing down for negative energy, has a black pyramid built into itself, and then out of that, three-dimensional, okay? Out of that, we see the sacred geometry with the two black obelisks thrusting upward. This is absolutely amazing. I mean, this is just symbolism within symbolism within symbolism. This is rings within rings, wheels within wheels, compartmentalization. Not only is it laid out flat before us, it's rising up into the sky. Uh, this, th this whole thing is just, this is one of the most occultic New World Order Illuminati markers I've ever seen in my life. One of the biggest problems I have with the whole Masonic system, whether you love them or hate them, is that it's admitted that in many towns in the U.S., if you're not a Mason, you're not getting a job as a police officer, you're not going to get any business as a lawyer, as a printer. And it's really bad in England. It's been in the BBC. It's been all over their news that uh, you basically can't become a barrister unless you're a Mason. You can't become a judge for sure unless you're a Mason. And then it's a good old boy network and uh, that Masons are unable to really get in trouble in that political system. Well, guess what? I know about that personally. My dad's great uncle, when my dad was growing up in East Texas, I lived next door to him. And he'd run away when he was like 12 years old and gone away and been a sailor on steamships, all this stuff. He came back during Prohibition. And uh, he, you know, when, when liquor was illegal, he's making a bunch of money in Houston running these bars. And some guys tried to basically take his money once, and he shot two of them and killed them. And when he went in before the judge, all he did was flash his Masonic hand sign of a Mason in distress and they, the judge said, case dismissed. No debating it, no nothing. And so, and in that case, he was in distress. You know, as he told my dad the story, you know, he was some other criminals. Criminals like to rob criminals. And I don't know how criminal he was. It was prohibition. You know, people wanted to drink. It's a stupid law. But the point is, is there was criminals involved. And they tried to knock him over with a big bag of money. And he, old Uncle Houston, I guess young Uncle Houston at the time, pulled out his gun and blasted both of them. And he went in there and he was gonna be going down because he did kill these people. And uh, you know the whole thing was criminal, what was going on. And he gave the Mason in distress sign and the judge said dismissed. The founding fathers of this country, about 60% of them were Masons, but again, they weren't bad people. They were compartmentalized. Before he died, uh, the then uh, retired uh, president George Washington wrote letters saying there's an evil force out of France taking over masonry. Uh, you know, it, it's it's it, it's turning it against good institutions. It, it you know it's evil. It's 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 black is what he called it. Uh, so we know there's also been internal struggles within it, but it's certainly from its start, from its foundations, is occultic. It predates Christianity, and you walk into the Capitol and it says to our goddess. And there's a little decoration.